Hello, it's Katie Forrestal back at you with my book and chapter two. I decided that I'm not going to go all the way through the four chapters that I have written by doing videos because I think it's just going to be too many videos. And so after chapter two, you're going to have to read the blog. It's at rejectpornography.com. Um, and of course you probably want to go there anyways, because that's where all the references are. And if I say something and you don't quite understand it, you can go back and reread it and it'll make more sense to you. So I don't even know if I'll do all of chapter two, because some of it's very complicated and kind of hard to do by speaking it. So I'm going to do at least a few more videos and then I'll leave the rest up to you. And if I get any new chapters coming out, I will let you know about them and add them to my blog. So let's start chapter two. This is from 10, 10 Common Sense Reasons to Project Pornography, if you haven't seen any of the other videos. Okay, second reason, and oh, by the way, I think I said reject pornography, but it's rejectpornography.com is the blog, just in case I didn't say that. All right, second reason of the 10 Common Sense Reasons to Reject Pornography is that it promotes prostitution. Now, some of you might say, so what? Other countries do it, and that's what I want to talk about. I'm going to talk a little bit about why it's not good for our country and other countries that have done it and how it's resulted in um, hurting their women, especially. Um, and it's uh, been, become a cultural norm and very hard for them, those women to get out of. So we'll get into that. Probably in the second video, but the first one is just going to be kind of an overview of how it promotes prostitution. Okay. Pornographic films are no different than prostitution. It is sex for money. The fact that it is legal is a contradiction. The fact that an 18-year-old who is not even allowed to drink legally can partake in pornographic films is even more baffling. Cable is one of the main providers of pornographic films in broadcast, broadcast television has been pushing the limits further and further without much intervention from the FCC. In a documentary entitled American Porn, a producer for Hustler Magazine shares how his marketing tactic of using 18-year-old girls in his video series entitled Barely Legal capitulated his business into a huge success. Since that video, um, since that time, the industry has grown exponentially and child pornography is coming more of a problem with children as early as the age of infancy being raped and tortured and even being sold by their parents to try to appease a Gutman-like progression of depravity that comes with porn pornographic addiction. I'm just going to put a little note in there. People have said to me, well, I've been watching pornography for years and I don't have a um, Gutman-like progression of depravity. Well, just because you don't doesn't mean a lot of other people don't. And maybe there's more inside of you than you even know. But um, there is a reference on that that you can look up and read the um, scientific literature where they got that, um, that statistic from. I don't want to call it statistic, but where they prove out their point in a um, peer-reviewed scientific piece of literature. Okay, so moving on. Child pornography is cor of course, is an illegal underground business, but it started with someone, someone having the mindset of the younger the better, as is the concept of barely legal. In America, prostitution is a moral issue and has not been known to be acceptable uh, and acceptable means of income for women or a legal service for men. However, when America started allowing pornographic films, which are a form of prostitution, to become a part of everyday life for many addicted co consumers and also allowed rap artists to glamorize pimping out women under the guise of free speech, we crossed over the boundaries of the obscenity clause in our Constitution and started the snowball effect that is coming down hard with violence against women and, ch and children increasing dramatically. And here are some statistics. Quote, 
there has been a 7.74% increase in the number of child pornography images and videos reviewed through the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children's Child Victim Identification Program. End quote. Another quote. With this growth in the pornography industry, the demand for fresh merchandise has outstripped the supply, leading pornographers to turn to sex trafficking in order to have an ample supply of women and girls for their online and video materials. End quote. This demand for child pornography is being man manifested in the most grotesque ways imaginable, and children are being groomed and targeted for sex trafficking. We can turn a blind eye to the recent... We can't turn a blind eye to the recent headlines. Ugh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm really stuttering a lot today, but... We can turn a blind eye to the recent headlines, or we can stand up and say, enough is enough. We may not have the answers, but we cannot deny that the evil has increased, and part of it is due to the unfettered use of obscenity. Quote, A Texas man was sentenced to four consecutive life sen sentences for raping a three-month-old baby girl and filming it. Police say Atkins filmed himself raping the three-month-old girl and took photos of himself sexually assaulting her for her entire first year of life. End quote. Quote, a Pasco County assistant, that's Florida, Pasco County assistant principal was charged with possession, production, and distribution of child pornography amid allegations that he took sexually explicit photos of a 14-year-old boy and sent them to another man. End quote. Another quote, 22 years ago, before we had public access to the internet so readily, parents were sexually abusing their children, but they weren't taking videotapes and making pictures and putting them on the internet. Now, that's what we're beginning to see, which means that they see their children not only as their victims, but as a commodity for money to the public, those who are like-minded and would like to have access to their children in that sense. So I see the commodification of children as a bigger problem in our society and the fact that we fail to see them as individuals who will be highly harmed by knowing that their images are on the internet." End quote. Freedom Youth Project, an organization that fights against child sex trafficking through research, believes that pornography is a leading cause of human trafficking for minors in the United States. A recent study in San Diego schools found astounding evidence of gangs targeting and recruiting students for sex trafficking in middle and high school. Quote, there is almost a disbelief that this is really happening in our high schools, Stefan said. These are kids and they are trying to keep it a secret. It is upon us adults to recognize it and stop it because this really is happening. End quote. Oh no, that's not. This is all from an article, um, let me see if I can find this. Well, it's, it's in the notes, but maybe I'll find it later. But, um, it was in a, 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 a California newspaper, and although that quote ended, I think this is more from the same article. A three-year study by the University of San Diego and Point Loma Nazarene University, released in 2015, at 8,830 to 11,773 victims, mostly underage girls, are trafficked in San Diego each year. Some of the girls are from the region. Others are brought here from other parts of the state. Largely operated by gangs, the industry is estimated to have, a gener have generated $810 million in 2013, researchers found. In 20 San Diego County high schools that participated in the study, all confirmed that recruitment was happening with their students. Of these schools, 18 of them reported documented cases of sex trafficking victimization. About 140 staff members from 20 high schools identified 81 reported victims, along with an additional 54 suspected victims over five years. They also identified identified 17 recruiters targeting their campuses. These abusers may be victims themselves to the power of pornography or the horror of child sexual abuse. Their minds may have been altered, their hearts have grown cold, and their actions are brought on by addiction that feeds on progressive perversity. On the other hand, they may just be capitalists trying to make money on the latest illegal trend of activity. Either way, our country's children are at risk. 
I believe that the heartbeat of America is love, family, and community, and sex is a sacred part of that mix, meant to be treated with respect and dignity, not as a commodity, and not to be used as a coercive tool for self-gratification. I think most Americans would agree that our children need to be protected, nurtured, and given the chance for meaningful and fulfilling relationships and careers. We cannot allow our nation to bow down to the god of consumerism while sacrificing the very fiber of our being. Now, I'm going to talk about predatory webs. If you go back to the beginning of this book, the first chapter, I talked about predatory marketing practices and predatory marketing practices and how they have seeped into our culture through um, the, the um, relaxation of the obscenity clause and FCC rules and all these things that are supposed to be there to protect our society have not done a very good job and um, that has caused predatory webs to be created and I'll explain that a little bit more soon. Okay, so predatory webs. Sex Factor, a reality show that plays off the ideas of shows like American Idol and X Factor, tried to sell its wares to cable networks. It has not been accepted by any but was available as a series on the internet. Judges on the show place themselves on a pedestal and imitate the likes of other reality star judges. Mostly former porn stars, they know their business and feel they are offering the contestants a privilege to be mentored by them. Auditioning for this show means performing sex acts. Becoming a contestant means continuing to for perform more sex acts with various people with no compensation. One contestant shares her narrative about how she is supporting family members through her work making it seem like a viable job option while emphasizing her charitable deeds. She says it's easy and lucrative. The judges and the contestant on the sex factor who claimed she needed a way to pay back her student loans, along with the Duke University student who made headlines for being vocal about her participation in the industry for the same reason and had a movie produced about her story, are all creating a predatory web by offering a so-called easy solution to solve financial problems and enticing naive and uninformed women to do something that will affect them the rest of their lives. It is the responsibility of the government to protect children and young adults from being pulled into these webs of deception. When they fail, society suffers. Pornography has become a predatory web that has been weaved into American society against the will of many adults and children. It would probably be impossible to eradicate, but it can at the very least be put back into a more discreet place. The internet needs more filters, social media needs to be more responsible, so-called adult entertainment needs to be out of harm's reach, and parents need to pay attention to what their children are doing. Finally, the business community should lead in an effort to educate and end predatory marketing practices aimed at children and adolescents. Quote, the predatory web is formed of five essential structural components, a predator, a prey, a tool, a loss of some form of harm to the prey, and an unpleasant surprise. It is activated through five chronological strategic steps. One, identifying the prey's weaknesses. Two, baiting. Three, forcing decision. Four, trapping. Five, rendering the prey completely inoffensive. Predators and preys each address fear in a different way. Predators take a step back, analyze, devise their five-step plan of attack, and proceed. Prey are impulsive, naive, and quite willing to remain blind for as long as this feeds their dreams of wealth. End quote. I am writing this book after hitting a roadblock with my dissertation committee while trying to obtain a doctorate in business administration. The head of the department does not see this as a business issue, more, but more of a sociological, psychological, or public health issue, which it is too, however... Although I understand his reluctance, we have already seen that this is an economic and marketing issue as well. I feel this can be used to educate future business leaders. 
As we will see in further chapters, there is plenty of opportunity for business ethics educators to use the pornography industry as an example of human right violations due to the violence and unfair treatment in the industry and product safety violations because they have made people a product to be used like a machine which is unnatural and unhealthy and is causing a public health crisis. Corporate social responsibility is another aspect of business that is important to explore. I will cover more of these areas in later chapters. The marketing of pornography. Quote, pornography created by novices and without scripts in homes was typically sold for $250 to $2,000 to any of 100 U.S. companies providing minor editing, packaging, and distribution services. Female victims spoke about coercion, abuse, rape, torture, and battering in the production, along with fear and humiliation about the knowledge that the people were buying videos of their abuse for pleasure and entertainment. These victims had no legal, legal re redress. Many women and children were photographed or videotaped by husbands, boyfriends, or others without their consent or knowledge. End quote. As I've stated, marketing, including but not limited to predatory marketing practices, could be a great topic of study and conversation. Marketing is about ideas. Ideas can become behaviors and cultural norms. If left unfiltered, unhealthy, and harmful ideas can affect many ge generations. It is the responsibility of adults to protect the minds of children and businesses to protect consumers. Marketing cannot be separated from ethical standards. The American Marketing Association has a preamble, and this is what it says. The American Marketing Association commits itself to promoting the highest standard of professional ethical norms and values for its members, practitioners, academics, and students. Norms are established standards of conduct that are expected and maintained by society and or professional organizations. Values represent the collective conception of what communities find desirable, important, and morally proper. Values also serve as the criteria for evaluating our own personal actions and the actions of others. As marketers, we recognize that we not only serve our organizations, but also act as stewards of society in creating, facilitating, and educating the transactions that are part of the greater economy. In this role, marketers are expected to embrace the highest professional ethical norms and the ethical values implied by our responsibility toward multiple stakeholders, which are customers, employees, investors, peers, channel members, regulators, and the host community. End quote. Americans could bring hope to less developed countries if we held a higher ethical standard, but sadly we have become known as one of the top producers in the pornography industry and our youth are beginning to believe the lies that have been planted in their minds through predatory marketing practices. Quote, Making ethical decisions about pornography means knowing where your porn comes from and the labor conditions under which it is made. If we are willing to be concerned about these issues when it comes to sneakers or food, then we need to transfer those concerns to the adult industry as well. End quote. The pornography industry and legalization of prostitution is a step backward for America, and if we don't turn the tide, it will only further desensitize the hearts of our youth and lead them to desperation, callousness, hopelessness, and despair. Predatory marketing practice, practices and the unbridled use of obscenity have infiltrated America, luring young adults and causing a boldness from corrupt business owners determined to change our country's norms. Is this what we really want? Maybe we can learn something from other countries. The next video is going to be about comparing cultural ideologies on a global level. Thanks for listening, and I will be back with you for the next one.